So guys, we are here at the Harden Trotter. Today we're gonna be showing you guys how to take apart an entire pig or half a pig. As long as you guys know how to do one side, you should be good on the other side since the pig is exactly the same right down the middle. What you need to know, we'll probably get to learn here. And James from here from the Harden Trotter, he's one of the co-founders, he's gonna be helping us out on how to do this. He's gonna be showing us how to take apart the pig, what are the different parts and what the names are and what all those little things. He'll be able to explain to us a whole lot better. And today's kind of special because they're cutting up my half pig. So I'm super excited to see how this goes. That's James right there. He's gonna be helping us out, butcher this thing up. I am literally seeing at half a carcass and I have no idea how to divide this thing up. Could you enlighten us, <laughs> please? Sure, yeah, uh, let me see. First of all, as far as anatomy goes, you have the, um, the fresh ham, you have the top sirloin area, the tenderloin is right here, lays right underneath the spine. Um, we'll take that off first. We'll second right after we take all of the kidney fat off right here on the belly and then you have the loin section and then you have the shoulder section which is the pork butt the picnic and then you have the ham hocks and the trotters nice. and we'll start to break it down so which part are we taking off first right now so first thing I want to do is kind of open up the belly section I have to take all this uh, kidney fat off I'm gonna separate go right along the contour of the ham itself just so I can start to get access to the whole thing. So this is the kidney fat. This actually surrounds the kidneys. So I'm guessing that's what protects the kidneys from yes. anything? Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is what you would typically, this is what you would use for lard. It has a really high smoking temperature. Nice. Um, and it doesn't have any flavor to it, so so this is what we, like, since I'm a carnivore, I love eating a bunch of meat. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I'm buying this pig is that's exactly what we would want to cook maybe ribeye steaks with, like throwing a little bit of that beforehand as opposed to using maybe olive oil. That way you get that high smoking point and you get a really nice crust. Yep. That's... Yeah, that would, that would definitely work. And where is this pig particularly coming from? These are Cook's pigs, which we've used since day one. They're originally out of Julian, but they moved up closer to the uh, to the slaughterhouses, and so they're uh, they're based out of Santa Rosa now. Big pastures up there. The pigs just roam around and forage and get all their food just right off the pasture. So what I'm gonna do is separate the, uh, the shoulder or the Boston butt and picnic front ham hock and the trotter from the loin section. So what I'm gonna do is use my trusty boning knife, um, <laughs> find the fifth rib. So I always count one, two, three, four, five. And so in between the fifth and the sixth rib, I'll make the cut. Go all the way through down to the... By the way guys, this is not an easy task for all those of you who think that, you know, we'll chop this off with a kitchen knife, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a reason he's using that saw. <laughs> yeah. Jason got nothing on him right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is uh, split it right in between the vertebrae. And so, it went through. This guy, which is a scimitar, and then cut all the way through. Ooh, nice. So, you can see from there, that looks like a pork chop, and this is where the pork chops start, right on that side. 
James brought up a great point right now. That looks like a giant piece of bacon. Like if somebody was to give me this the entire side, I'd be like, oh, that's just a big piece of bacon. That's exactly what I would think. <laughs> yeah. I'm finding out more and more that I don't know much about the anatomy of these animals. <laughs> Since we're going to do porterhouses with the tenderloin, I'm actually going to find the one joint, which is right here. Um, you have the zero joint, and that's where the spine and then the tail comes together. Um, right there in that kind of U shape. And so we always separated the top sirloin and the loin section at the one joint. And so, so I'll just go straight down. And then, so we're gonna leave this part of the tenderloin on there. On this part, it's actually a pretty good amount of the tenderloin still. So you'll still get a nice chunk of tenderloin goes right up against the hip bone. How long have we been doing this for? Let me see, so I've been doing this not in a retail aspect, but I've been breaking down animals ever since I was a little kid with my dad. We would go hunting and then break down everything ourselves. But as far as, uh, as, far as retail goes and really learning how to get the best yield out of everything, I've been doing it for about about six or seven years now, I guess. Nice. Something like that. And then luckily I got the gift of being able to work with my hands fairly well, so it came pretty naturally to me. That's awesome. And what do we have there? So that is, that's the butt end of the, uh, the tenderloin. Mm -hmm. And so once you clean it up, um, it'll look nice and pretty and- um, More like is, a tenderloin. <laughs> yeah. Next step is I'm gonna separate the, uh, the ham from the top sirloin. Yeah, and right before buying this, I remember asking you, um, you know, what what do the pigs eat and what do what do they feed on while, while they're out on the fields? We went into this discussion where pigs just don't eat grass; they eat a bunch of stuff. And these guys are pretty good about letting them feed on whatever they have to feed, as opposed to feeding them a bunch of soy-based food and a bunch of other stuff. Correct? Sure, that's totally correct. Pigs are are foragers, and so they just kind of run around in, in, in a natural state. They'd be looking for like nuts and roots and stuff like that, whatever they could find. Luckily up there, there's enough pasture area where they can actually do that. They don't supplement anything. And then, wow. <laughs> you have your whole family. I'm over here standing like, whoa, that's a big ham. And he's like, yeah, there's another ham. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna start working on the loin section next. So I'm gonna throw these back in the uh, walk-in just so they stay to temp. Got it, and we'll go from there. It is super cool and super nice of him to actually let us, like show us how all this is done. Cause I think it's super crazy. Like just going through all the parts and everything. I'm like, eh, just trying to stay away from the knives and the saw. What are you taking out of there? All right, so I'm gonna hang this. And so what I'm actually going to do, just like the Achilles, there's tendons up in the wrist area. That's a tendon? This and so, a yeah, this is a tendon. And so I just cut that out and there's a hole. And so I could hang it by this. They're really, uh, they're really strong. So we're gonna take the belly section off. When you're butchering an animal, um, you're, you're looking for certain areas that take and guide you through. It's typically fat sections like this. The reason that I took the shoulder off between the fifth and the sixth uh, vertebrae is because that's where the shoulder blade ends. And so you can see a little bit of the cartilage of the shoulder blade right there. Oh yeah. From there on, you're not gonna have like a piece of bone like stuck in your pork chop. So there's little tricks like that that you kind of learn as you go. So this is a pelvic bone and it comes to a 45 degree angle right here. Okay. And so I always make an angle or a, a cut, a little incision right there. So that's gonna be my line. And then over here. Oh, that's gonna be your guide. Yep. So I have to do the same thing on the other side too. 
So what I do is, as far as you really want to look at the size of the pork chop, generally this little fat section, I'll go about an inch in front of that and make a line. That's a good size pork chop Ooh, yeah. right there. And then I'll connect those lines. And so that's my guide for the bone saw. And so I'm going to go through the whole rib section and, um, and then take this whole piece. Okay. So I'll flip it back, go all the way to the ground area of the block. And then go around like that. And then since this is hung, the skin's pretty tough. So you gotta just get through the skin. So, and that's the other section right there. That's the belly, and then this is the loin. Okay, so I get it now. So that's bacon, and that's bacon, and what you put in there was bacon as well, and that's bacon. Yeah, yeah the whole thing's bacon. bacon. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So this is, but this is like <laughs> all jokes aside. This is where the bacon comes from, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. And so we're actually gonna cut, so the spare ribs are still on there. Which we'll, ones are the spare ribs? Um, the bottom section, so. Oh, okay, there yeah, you Yeah, you can see the ribs. I can cut those off right now, actually. Yeah, let's go through that section. I'm gonna find the last rib, which is right here. Okay. This is cartilage. Got it. And so at the end of every single rib on every animal or human being that has ribs is gonna be cartilage that connects to your sternum. There you you can see this little ridge, and that's where that cartilage is that hits every single rib. And so I always want to stay about an inch out so I don't actually hit it because you'll cut through it very easily without even knowing it. Yeah, because that would suck if, it, if people were actually asking you for that section and you just were to go through it. It was like, oh, oh well, I kind of screwed up. Yeah, uh, and, and you also don't want that, since this whole like bottom portion is bacon, yeah. um, you don't want like a chunk of cartilage in your bacon. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> definitely no. Yeah, so I always use a little, a little cautionary inch. Again, you're just going through the fat, correct? Just yep, kind of like so I'm looking at the seam. Trying to stay as parallel to the uh, to the block as possible. It almost looks like the fat's your guide. Like the fat is usually your guide. Yeah. So you just do little cuts as you go. Because you kind of know where you are at that point. So those are the spare ribs. Nice. And then uh, and then you have the whole boneless belly. So this will brine and smoke. You got bacon. That is a lot of bacon. I am so gonna pass out on this. <laughs> I am so gonna be swimming in bacon for like the next month or so, or probably a week. All my money's gonna go to buying pigs and bacon. Pigs and bacon, pigs and bacon. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is actually pretty easy. We're gonna take off the top sirloin section, and that's in between, like we discussed earlier, between the one joint right there oh, so where the curve is okay. and then so this is the one joint that's where we took that little piece off yep okay that. so that's we're gonna separate this whole section and so this could be totally up to you it could be it can go to sausage it can go to top sirloin steaks um, which a lot of people don't see very often What's it called again? Uh, that's the top sirloin. So that's, oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, so you have the loin section. So you have the rib section and then the uh, like the center cut loin section, which we're gonna make into porterhouses. Inch thick is good for you. Yeah, actually, um, an inch thick is great because anything more than that, then I have to reverse here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so I just go in between each vertebrae, which is about an inch. And so I start with the saw, and then I'll start cutting them off. Uh, the simple. Okay. 
now that I cut through the vertebrae, um, I'm gonna start to cut individual chops off. Let's see. So what I'm doing is just getting through the skin. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, so that's chop number one. And something that's also super important, guys, when cutting these up, like taking these from like your grocery shop butcher to like, you know, somebody that's a pro that's been doing it for quite some time, you know, it's getting evenly thick cut size steaks, you know, one's bigger than the other, one's like this, the other side's like that. It makes them harder to cook because they're uneven. So side will probably cook faster than the other one and you'll have like an uneven cook throughout the chop. So you want to get like a perfect cut like this. Yeah, so um, whenever you're trying to like pick them out uh, in like a butcher shop or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then it'll even out a little, it'll even out a lot more once we actually take the skin off. That's what's like kind of holding it up. That's cheap um, right there. Yeah. I know that, I was um, born with that. <laughs> I was probably born and then right after like a, like a bag of chicharron came out and they were like, oh, there you go. <laughs> we got all the chops lined up here. You can see like the fat content on each, like the marbling changes like quite a bit. You can see it's like super nice there. And as it goes along, you'll start seeing that it gets leaner and leaner and leaner. Like these ones, it, it's pretty lean by here. You can see all the marbling right here. It's like super nice. And over here, nothing. It's it's almost not present, huh? It's kind of crazy. Yeah. These are these are your ribeyes. And well, I guess these are all your ribeyes. These yeah. are gonna be your like your New Yorks. I I prefer a ribeye because I think it's more tender. Yeah. Um, and then it gets a little leaner and a little more tough um, yeah. once you actually get to the loin section. So same thing. I was just discussing this uh, yesterday with my with my girlfriend. Um, she said, "Do you prefer the ribeye or do you prefer the New York steak?" And I was and I was thinking about it, and I was like, "I like the ribeye every now and then. It's like maybe every weekend, like uh, every weekend, I'll have a good like reverse here, you know, kind of thing. Like it doesn't matter, inch and a half. Like I'll eat the entire thing until I pass out, kind of steak. But for every day." I could eat a New York steak every day. Yeah. Like it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely just um, there's ribeye people and New York people. Yeah. yeah. And so what is that called right there? What you so got? this is a bone scraper. So anytime when you saw through the bone, there's going to be bone dust, basically sawdust. And so this thing is the device that takes all that stuff off and makes everything look nice and pretty. Uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely want to take that off. <laughs> Great. So... We're going to be peeling off that fat cap, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see how it's going down that little line, yeah. It's definitely yep. following the entire thing. And then, that's the outcome. That's your ribeye. And all that's going to be poured towards sausage, correct? Yeah, so we'll just take all this off. And so I usually go about two or three inches in, just go down to the skin itself and then you just zip through. And so that you would make a chicharron or something, oh, yeah. whatever you want to do. And then you have the pure fat, the back fat right here, and we'll just dice this up and uh, do that for every single one. Could that be used for cooking as well, that fat? It can. Um, it's got a lower smoking temperature. You wouldn't want to cook with you that as You don't want to do, yeah. yeah. Get whatever you're cooking um, in there like as soon as possible. Um, really good for like eggs and stuff like that. Like super, super easy, super quick stuff. You just don't want to do like super high heat for a long time. going to do now is cut uh, we're going to cut porter houses so this is the loin section the center cut loin section and then you have the uh, the tenderloin right here and so what I want to do I'm going to have to cut through the bone section with the saw but I want to make sure that the tenderloin is intact through every single part oh so you, um, you so make like a little guide first with yeah that so we don't oh. so we don't shred the the tenderloin you don't want to do that Field 
dressing it is a lot different from actual like retail because you're really just trying to figure out like the best way to get it out of the woods as quick as possible. As compared to this, you're really looking at yield and so out there, you're just like, all right, I need to do this as soon as possible and get it in the fridge. Here but, it looks uh, like you have all the time in the world to do it versus yeah. out in the field, it's like, before it spoils, before a bear gets to us, before something is <laughs> yeah. trying to take away or catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's a lot different out there. I learned this in, in Hollywood, butcher shop called Lindy and Grundy. They're unfortunately not around anymore, but I was an apprentice there with the intent to open this shop. Um, yeah, and, so like six, and, six years ago. And like you that. finally made it, man. There you go. <laughs> this is a success story right there. It worked, yeah. <laughs> So you guys start off small and then you, it just grows, it grows, it grows. Yeah, we're trying. You just gotta put your back into it or your saw into it and that <laughs> usually works, I guess. Just cut it open. So what we have here is pork butt, which is actually pork shoulder. You have the picnic, the uh, ham hock, and the trotter. Right underneath the spine here, we're gonna separate the pork butt from the pork picnic. We do it two different ways. Um, so we have to go through these ribs up here in the front section um, at an angle. So I kind of hang it off. So once I get through that, once we go Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I go all the way down and you'll actually hit like this shoulder bone. <clears throat> we want to cut through that again with the uh... Oh that's your guy that you yeah. Scrape everything off again. Scrape everything off, because there's a good amount of cutting there. So this is the pork butt. We're actually gonna take this exterior, the feather bones, a little bit excess of the rib section, and then the neck bones uh, right there. Um, so we're gonna cut right up under the um, first five ribs. Just follow the contour. And then on this side, go right underneath the feather bones, all the way around. And then you hit the neck bone area right there. And so what I do is just go around each one of those. And then you hit the atlas bone, which holds the skull on the spine. Oh, okay. Let's see how it's... And all those are just bon excess bones, kind of? Yeah, and so we'll take all these, typically, and then just make bone broth out of it. Or like a ramen broth. Excess fat and all that stuff, you can, uh, you can totally render it down. Um, render it down, yeah, just throw it in there. <laughs> okay, so that is the piece of bone. That's just excess bone for whatever you need bone for. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> So this is still bone in, so it has the shoulder blade in it, but if you're going to do any kind of roasts or uh, like carnitas or anything like that, you generally want to keep it in just because you get a lot of flavor out of it. And then I'm just trimming off some of the age on it. And then once you get up closer to the head or where the head was, you get some glands. That's actually what that is and they're not very tasty. Um, and then, that's actually, that's done. There you go. So that's, that's a whole pork butt, so that's about 15 to 17 pounds. Nice. Um, skin on. So that's why this pork actually looks a lot darker than your regular box store pork. So it just has to do with the way they're raised. It, literally, all the animal's flavor comes from that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Since you're gonna do pulled pork, we're gonna take off the outside layer of skin. 
can also see there's a good amount of fat here, and so we want to go ahead and go in that knuckle seam. Oh yeah, it's and, still right there. Yep, it's and so crazy. it goes out, it goes through like the entire body. So I'll start to seam that out. So usually I'll just go right along. It reminds me of uh, those um, kindergarten papers where they draw the little scissor lines. Yeah. <laughs> Cut through here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and you can see it all the way. Yeah, all the way down there. Good room. Yeah, that is pretty. So we'll start to pull it, and then just open it up. Just follow it again as a guy. Yep. Oh. So what exactly is that back stamp that you see there? Uh, that's USDA. Oh. So that means that it was inspected by a USDA inspector. And um, and it's good to go for retail sale. Nice. Yeah. So if they give you half a pay, guys, and you don't see that seal, and they said it was USDA, uh, yeah. It's not USDA. <laughs> it's yeah. Probably not USDA. All of our stuff goes through USDA. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But there's just so many seals these days that kind of don't mean nothing. Yeah, there's a good amount of them. USDA standards are actually really, really high. It really just depends on how much quantity that they're actually pushing out through that specific slaughterhouse, which things can be missed every once in a while if they're doing like 10,000 animals a day or something like that. Yeah, I mean, um, all the meat starts looking the same after like the 100th cut. Yeah, 100th our... I only use slaughterhouses that they'll literally do anywhere from like 6 to like 20 a day um, as compared to like the big guys, everything you get from like Costco and all that stuff. They're doing 10, 10,000 or something like that. And it's and when you think about it, it's hard to trust whoever is doing that job because yes, like, I mean, I yeah. Can't. There's only like a certain amount of inspectors, even USDA inspectors. I just had one come in and they inspected us. There's only 123 in America. Oh, um, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> 123 for all the meat that's eaten in America, guys. So, think crosses crosses that one. <laughs> Tell the people in the camera what you got going on. Where where can we find you? All right, guys. This is the Hard and Trotter Butcher Shop. My name is James. I'm one of the owners. Um, we're in North Park, El Cajon Boulevard, right across the street from Sonic, which is pretty ironic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> These guys probably hate you over here. <laughs> but uh, Whole Animal Butcher Shop, we do everything in-house. Come, we even do sandwiches and beer and wine and all that fun stuff too. So just come by and say hi, see what we have, and we'll go from there. I haven't had any other sandwiches, but once I get off of the carnivore diet, I think I might <laughs> do one, because I've gone through here, I've come to buy some meat or something, and some stuff, or just getting like touch with them, and the smell is amazing. Like They do all their stuff back there, and so it's, it's awesome. Yeah, we got a full kitchen. Uh, <laughs> do all of our own broths, all of our own deli meats, all of uh, everything, so. Yeah, come on by and check it out. Come by, check it out, guys, over here in San Diego, North Park.